Hello Leo friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my Leo May 2021 Astrology Must Knows Horoscope Reports. May brings us right into the heat of the eclipse season with radical changes, crazy endings, brilliant new beginnings, all brought right into the forefront. And fortunately for Leos, at least for whatever your Leo placement is, these eclipses make a beautiful angle for you. So we'll talk more about that, including which of you have the chances for most, of, even more blessings than all the rest of the Leos. Even though every Leo has a chance to benefit from this eclipse, those of you closer to the eclipse point have even more possible goodies ahead. So we'll talk about all that. Actually, I'm going to give you the structure of the rest of the video so that you know everything we're going to cover in order. First, we're going to talk about things to celebrate. You can see I've already gotten started on that for Leos for this month. Then we're going to talk about some things to watch out for. Some of the things we talk about will kind of be on the line there. There's some things to celebrate and also some things to watch out for. We'll talk about all that. We're also going to talk about some specific strategies for Leos. Maybe you didn't know that I have been a coach for 20 years besides being an astrologer for almost that time. And as such, I can't separate astrology from coaching. And so if you've watched my, my video for a long time and seen my other resources, then you know that I'm all about self-development. And so I'm going to con continue helping to move you along a continuum of your highest expression to have the most joy in your life. And that can be achieved by also really understanding your wiring and how you can offset any challenges that come from it. Of course, we have blessings from our wiring as well. But in the places where there become, you know, issues happen, then just some simple strategies can help you. And so I'm going to talk about some of those for Leos. We're also going to talk in depth about the eclipses. The videos are a little bit longer this month because we had a lot to address with understanding the eclipse cycle, when this eclipse cycle happened in years past, when it started again this time, when the hot spots have been, so you can track the storylines. We'll also talk about some just a few of the general implications of Sagittarius uh, Gemini eclipses, and I'll refer you to some other resources that I have that are more in depth. And we'll talk about what fields of experience are accentuated for each Leo placement, and then I'll refer you to some other resources based on that. And of course, we'll cover who of you, who among you, is the, in the closest proximity to the exact hit of the eclipse. And that is a positive thing because it would be a sweet angle for you. Okay, so let's talk about more things to celebrate besides the eclipses being in a nice angle. The first other thing that I wanted to talk about is that as the planets move into Gemini, and there will be a lot of that even starting right from the beginning of the month because Venus and Mercury are heading into Gemini early in May. And, be, and because of that, the nice angles will start for you. Gemini makes a 60 degree angle with Leo. That is our ingredients on the counter angle, I call it. It's like where people show up to give you all the ingredients for a peach pie. Now you just have to make it. So there'll be lots of opportunities coming from those angles and there's just a natural rapport. The language of air is something that the language of fire understands. And if you have any friends, if you are, you know, whether you're a Leo moon or a Leo sun or a Leo rising, you probably have friends that, or close people close to you that are Geminis or, you know, um, have important Gemini placements. You might not realize this, but if you got deeper into their charts, you'd see it because this is a very nice dynamic. It just naturally gets along well. So you will be feeling that. And even though there will be a little bit of awkwardness, which we'll talk about in the, in the things to watch out for here pretty soon, um, from the Taurus placements, those are much less, you know, there was more of that in April, but it's starting to dwindle and diminish now with every day that we move into May. Okay, so some other things we have to celebrate have to do with friendships, networking, and online business pursuits. The world is going online in a very major way since last year when COVID shut everything down. And obviously, if I don't think that COVID shut everything down. I think the astrology shut everything down and COVID was given the reason, but that's a whole other thing. You can look for my video if you just search for Annie Botticelli coronavirus, you can watch my video about how the astrology created the things that have gone on. But in any case, when everything shut down, things got online really quick and people and companies who may have wanted to get their businesses online were forced to, and now we're in a whole new era of online uh, work and projects and connections. And there, these things are soaring for Leos at this time. So if you haven't gotten your business online and you want to, or you want to develop it, 
this is an amazing time, especially the first half of May. We're going to slip into Mercury retrograde in the middle of the month, so we'll talk about that and the things to watch out for, but I am going to talk about in the things to celebrate the fact that the Mercury retrograde is going to be in Gemini because that's back to this nice angle for you. So all of the Leo placements will have a chance to have sweet things coming from the past from this Mercury retrograde giving you kisses. And those of you who are in the like August 5th through August 18th or so time frame, you're going to be getting extra kisses or from 16 to 24 degrees if you're if you know your degree for your Leo placement you'll be getting extra kisses from the Mercury retrograde so blessings from the past in great abundance are more likely at that time for you and that's the end of May and all of June and even the early part of July okay so other things to celebrate is back to this idea of networking if there's something that you need or something that you want or something that you're trying to do somebody can help you and those somebodies are going to be coming out and connecting with you in great abundance this is an incredibly social time for leos and this is an incredibly social time for everybody but because this is also highlighting a house not just the sign of gemini which is a social energy it's highlighting a house for leo of, of a so, of social networks your chance for um, you know expanding your friendships and your groups and your acquaintances are very strong. You also might want to launch into social media work or develop that or make different decisions where you're stepping away from it or evaluating it. It's going to be front and center regardless of what you're choosing to do with it, whether you're moving towards it or moving away from it. Okay, there also will be continued work opportunities. This was true in April. This is going to be true in May things going on where your work is getting highlighted, questions about your work, what are you doing now, is it one, what you wanna be doing, what are you going to do in the future, how you can enhance your work, how you can make more money, raises, all of those kind of things, recognition, are all still on the table for extra goodies for Leo. Now, some of you might have some work issues. I always frame issues as helpers in disguise. And when you have that sort of attitude, you don't have to fear any of the challenges that would come. Because a challenge that comes, in my mind, is a messenger from the universe about something that's not quite right from your inner space that has to be rectified, otherwise you wouldn't be having the messenger, right? So it, it, it helps to reveal hidden pockets of unconscious patterns to you when somebody or something does something difficult outside of you if you accept to you know uh, to, uh, choose to accept this message and so you might see some of that in work like for instance your boss might be being a whatever choose your own adult word to put in there and or somebody at work or something like that and if that's the case maybe spirit is whispering to you either that you have to set a boundary that you need a new job that there was something else you wanted to do anyway that you know there are messages that are coming in the form of conflict in that space and not for all of you but for some of you for the other other of the leos you'll just have sweet sweet things and boost to your money and boost your income and things like that but it could manifest in either way but i still see either way as a positive thing leo people have been having an ongoing long-term focus on the 10th house of work and career and those of you who are not um, needing to be in the root workforce or do, don't want to be you're retired you're financially self-sufficient this energy can also manifest as your purpose your your things you know that you're going to share with the world regardless of needing money for them you know what you're here to do your dharma things like that and those types of topics can also be true for those of you who are in the workforce and want to be in the workforce so those things coming up okay so let's talk about um more things to watch out for so one of the things to watch out for has to do with these tourist placements tourist placements with uh, Leo placements don't jive very well, okay? And part of that is because Taurus is a fixed energy, you're a fixed energy, sometimes somebody who is fixed on something and is showing, you know, you're fixed on something and you're at a standstill. So there, there's, there's an opportunity to crack open out of the fixed model, but it's going to feel like, you know, one of those you know the western or western um movies where like 
both people are standing, you know, with their <laughs> cowboy stuff on and like pointed and ready. And it's like, okay, what are you going to do now? And that, that's this, this energy of this fixed kind of nobody's going to budge, nobody's going to move. And so you might have some topics like that come up. So the way to make lemonade out of this is first of all, to try to look at the other person's uh, perspective more and also to see if you can meet in a place outside the box. It makes me think of that Rumi uh, quote, outside of, the, of right and wrong, there's a field, something like that. I'll meet you there. You know, let's meet in the field that's outside of right and wrong. And this is, this is the kind of energy that might come up from this Taurus energy. And like I said, it's diminishing throughout the month and it is very much overshadowed by these sweet Gemini placements, which are good for you, but it may come up and I just wanted to speak to it. Also, let's get back to this understanding of the first part of May being, or half of May being very different than the second half of May. From the middle of March through the middle of May, we've got this beautiful open calendar of open stars that are ripe and ready for pushing out into the world, launches, major forward momentum, making up for lost time, big decisions, engagements, weddings, anything having to do with um, agreements, contracts, anything like that. It's just wide open for all of that stuff. Once we get to mid-May, around May 16th, things start to turn and we go into retrograde. It doesn't have to be a bad thing, it's just not a time that's indicated for clarity, making set agreements, making fixed plans, you know, or having, you know, or, or trying to step too far out of this moment. The universe gives us this beautiful reminder in the form of cyclical retrogrades when we're getting too far out of our center and of this moment. It is important for us to plan and look to the future and it is important for us to, you know, ha have one eye to the past, one eye to the future and our, our bodies in the middle here, right? But in the retrograde time, it's, it's a time where things from the past are more prominent and focused on than new things. Um, things that come in in the retrograde, which is the second half of May, all of June and early July, tend to be a little short, shorter lived than expected. I've seen it happen many, 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 many times where somebody meets someone like a romantic interest in the Mercury retrograde and they think that, wow, this is really, you know, something and then it fizzles out by, you know, the time that it goes direct or soon after. And it doesn't mean that that's 100% of the time. Many people have met their life partner in this transit. There have been superseding factors, etc. But it's just kind of showing the energy is less permanent, less certain, less fixed. And so if you know that going into it, you'll any plans that you make in the second half of May, all of June and early July, we'll just leave wiggle room there, you know? Just leave, if you're traveling, just know that your flights might be changed. Or, you know, if you're driving and you expect to do one thing, you might turn out to go in a completely different direction. And if you can stay awake to the synchronicities and be open to the flow, you can have an amazing time. And actually Mercury retrograde is, can be a fantastic time to travel, especially Mercury retrograde in Gemini. So you might find yourself traveling, taking a close by trip, taking a far trip. Um, people who aren't taking big trips might find themselves busy locally, driving around locally. It's definitely a time where you're going to be driven to distraction more and other people are also going to be distracted. So you have to be more careful driving and walking and where you put your body because everyone's minds, we're gonna be spinning from this Gemini energy and the distractions are going to abound more than usual. And the information coming in, a lot of information is going to be coming in more than usual and it's going to be hard to wade through everything. So if you are sure about things and you can get things set in the first half of May, great. If you're not sure and your intuition is saying hold off, it might be a time to refine, redesign, redo, refurbish, clear up old clutter, clear up um, you know, unfinished business in the second half of May, June and early July. And then we'll have another beautiful window for most of July, all of August and the first almost half of September to start to push out again, just so you can kind of see this rhythm happening. Okay, so a strategy that I wanted to talk about for Leo is if you understand the energetics behind the sign, then you can understand what you're, you're trying to balance out in the case where you might have issues from the energetics of the sign. Okay, so I'll explain more. Leo is a fixed sign. It, it cycles in and up. 
Okay, so the energy of Leo goes in and it goes up. So that can lead you to feeling ungrounded. That can lead you to, um, you know, just again, sort of being fixed. So, so the goal is to try to stretch your consciousness out. And I'm not saying that obviously Leos are highly creative and can, can think outside of the box and see outside and are, are, are everywhere. But there is something about consciously imagining this, this uh, spiral that pulls in and up, imagining the energy going out and down. Okay, so if you're if you're into subtle energetics, you, you will understand what I'm saying right away. If not, this might take a little bit of work. But basically, anything that gets your feet stamping, dancing, jumping, the standing mountain pose in yoga, um, you know, anything that pulls the energy down energetically is going to help balance this out. Walking, anything like that, or anything where you're using your feet, even swimming or you know, even if you're sitting in your seat and you're finding you're getting just too much up in your head and you're stuck there, just kind of like remember the rest of your body, you know, like bring the energy down and see if you can um, just breathe the energy out because it will come in the form and a lot of Leos have trouble with their spine for this reason. This energy fix is like compressing in the spinal regions and it's like if you're imagining the pressure come off of there and it just expanding out then it can help to support you in ways that are very hard to explain right now. But if you do the practice, then you'll, you'll see it. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to talk about the um, eclipses, the eclipse cycle, a little bit about what we've seen and can expect from the Gemini Sagittarius dynamic. And then we're going to talk about which of you are going to get the extra special kisses uh, from that close degree of the eclipse and what houses or fields of experience are going to be accentuated for you from the eclipse in May. The reason why I focus so much on eclipses during eclipse time is because they bring radical change, crazy trajectory shifts where you're going in one direction, then all of a sudden, almost overnight, you're heading in a completely different direction. Dramatic endings, exciting new beginnings, clearing up of karma in a major way where you feel like, wow, something has occurred and now certain patterns are just behind you. And brand new ways of being open up. It's a very exciting time. It can also be a very stressful time. And the, some of the changes that come are not welcome. Some of the changes that come are things that you've been trying to manifest for sometimes your whole life. And so it's just a very, very powerful time of extreme energies. The principle in physics that talks about matter never being created nor destroyed, that it simply changes form, is very evident at eclipse time. And we can see it happening in some common things, like for instance, a grandparent passes away and a grandchild is born, or you know, something notable goes on like that, like that type of thing, you know, some major somebody retires, but then they start their post-retirement, you know, new project. And it's like the energy of what is removed doesn't leave. It just changes in to this other form in this brilliant new beginning. And so you will either be a person who is having that happen in this especially May, June time frame, or you'll be a person who's watching people around you have crazy things going on and in some cases holding space for them because it can be, you know, even positive changes can be pretty stressful or a lot to take in as you're going through a major transition. And a lot of times, if you're not the person going through that change, you're holding space for the other person, meaning you're like, you're there for them, you're, you're holding their hand through it, or you're assisting them in some way. You can usually tell if you're going to be the person who's going through the changes or the person holding the space by the degree to which the sign and degree of the eclipse hits your personal planets. But since we have so many personal planets, we can't do that justice in general readings, but we can talk about some of that, which I tend to do, you know, in the horoscopes. But some people go through both of it, where they're holding space for other people who are going through a lot and they themselves are going through a lot of change, okay? So those are some must knows. Now, just to give you a little perspective about this particular eclipse cycle, the Sagittarius Gemini eclipse cycle. The last time we had this eclipse cycle was March 2011 through August 2012. 
And now it started again on May 2020 through January 2022. So it doesn't mean that everything that happened between March 2011 and August 2012 will occur again. It means that the things that occurred in that time that were related to the signs or houses that were accented for you are going to be themes that come up again. If something bad happened then, it doesn't mean something bad will happen now. It's just the areas of life that are activated, which of course I'm talking more about in, you know, the this May and June report to, to tell you what areas of life will be active for you from the perspective of your sun or rising or whatever you're watching for. But in general, you can think back to that time and then notice what similar themes started to come up again you know, around May of 2020 that have been going on. Now, the other must know about eclipses is it's, it's like an eclipse cycle has several periods of time where there is the eclipse season where everything gets heated up and right in the forefront and then it kind of fades into the backdrop. And then the eclipse season happens again every six months, this goes on, and then it heats up and then it kind of fades in the backdrop. So you'll also have noticed that whatever themes have come up for you, we had things that came up May, June, July of 2020, it's kind of like a pot boiling. The eclipses in the astrological perspective are not like they are in the astronomical perspective. From the astronomical perspective, they happen at that time and they're done. From the astrological perspective, there's this cycle that's working in the backdrop and it's working on areas of your life and it's active and then it fades in the backdrop and it's active. Okay, so this is, this is how I like to see this is that in May of last year of 2020, we had the heat go up. And then in June and July, it was like a rapid boil. And then it, and then you took the heat off and then it kind of like faded out into the backdrop. And then in November and December of 2020, the heat was on again. But then, you know, in January and then into February, March, April, we're like kind of down where the heat is off. Now, towards the end of April, the heat started coming on again of this 2021 and then May and June we're at a full boil again with the eclipses then into July it sort of starts to fade back down with the heat taken off into the backdrop and then towards the end of the year we'll have our final Gemini Sagittarius heat up and then fade out into January 2022 rather and it will um, it will be done and we'll be on to the next cycle okay so in general anything involving cars, transportation, including, you know, guarding yourself while you're driving. You have to be extra careful during Gemini uh, and Sagittarius eclipse cycles because it tends to highlight transportation. And so that can bring, you know, accidents or things with cars or, or vehicles or walking or your mobility. You don't have to be afraid. It's just to become more aware. So anything having to do with how we share information and how we, sh how we take in information and how we share it education. We can see since last year, we thought that it was COVID that did this, right? But it was really a part of an astrological cycle that was bringing the topic of education and how we are getting educated into the forefront. So now we have new breakthroughs and new storylines with how we're getting educated kids and adults. Also, how we're commuting or not commuting to work. So you can see as of, you know, this, the spring of 2020, the fall for those of you down under, and now in the spring of 2021, in the fall for those of you down under, we're, we're back in this, okay, what are we going to do with the kids in school? What are we, who's going to stay, wind up staying home? What are we doing with um, work? People are working from home. All of this is very much related to this eclipse cycle. It's more related to this eclipse cycle than it is COVID. COVID is part of the storyline, but COVID is also astrological. And if you want more information about that, search for Annie Botticelli coronavirus and watch my very in-depth video talking about how astrological cycles are really at the source of the things that we think are related to COVID. COVID is, is part of the astrology, not the cause of, of everything that's going on. So in any case, we will see things involving international um, topics. Immigration has been a very hot topic since last year, especially. And we're seeing the storylines of that unfold. Anything having to do with relationships with different countries and our international business, all of that is very much related to the eclipse cycle of the Sagittarius Gemini. So all signs will be seeing those storylines heating up into the forefront. Something else that is a major must know about eclipse time 
and eclipses in general is that the eclipse cycle matches the north and south node transit. So for those of you who know about north and south nodes, maybe you didn't know that there was a direct relationship between the eclipse cycle and the north and south nodes. They're both running along the ecliptic. And the ecliptic is a very, this is a very important um, area of focus in astrology because this has to do with your karma and your dharma. So the difficult patterns that you brought in, whether it was through your own soul's, you know, behaviors and journey, or whether it was through ancestral things that have gone on in your particular DNA, or whether it's the human consciousness that's undergoing evolution, all of those karmic pieces are represented in the South Node energies. And then the North Node energies speak to our highest expression this lifetime, our highest evolution, our dharma, what we came here to do. So eclipse time always is very rich with opportunities to clear karma, clear old patterns, clear programming that's not working, and set up new wiring, solidify the, the trace of a suggestion that's sitting there waiting to be actualized in the form of our highest destiny, taking steps into making that those pathways be solid and more of your norm. So it's very much a time where you have opportunities to step into your highest expression in major ways and let go of major old patterns and it become revitalized and have your life just opened up in ways that you've only dreamed of. So it's a very exciting time. I mean, what what is there in the mind of the seeker that could be more important than stepping into your highest destiny and your highest expression this lifetime, right? And so the eclipses bring us on there, you know, fate points, fate meetings, fate, you know, endings, d divine destined um, or fated, fated endings, fated beginnings, you know, things that, that have that sense of like, wow, this is really, this is really fated here. This is really destined. You'll feel that the energy of synchronicity moving you in these magical, um, you know, ways that you can't, you know, you have to acknowledge that, wow, obviously there, there's something else at work here. It's a very magical time and it's a very intense time and your nervous system will be under duress and you'll probably need more sleep, but it may be harder to sleep and you might need more of your nervous system support and your adrenal support. And those are ways that you can really maximize this time because the better rested you are and the more your body has the nutrition that it needs, the easier it is for you to uh, manage what's going on. Sometimes someone will say, well, what do, what do these supplements and these things you talk about have to do with astrology? And in my mind, they have everything to do with astrology because if you're trying to experience, have the best possible experience and you know that there are intense times coming, how you experience those intense times is going to be affected tremendously by the state of your adrenals and the state of the rest of your whole nervous system and your other systems. So if they are working well and well supported, then as the stresses come, it's easier for you to step into your superhero self and have an easier experience of the challenges that come. And the challenges, like I said, could be super positive, but still challenges just the same. Like let's say someone buys their you know, dream house and that certainly could happen now. Well, the leaving of the old house, the actual move, the logistics, you know, there's stress involved even in the best of changes. And those are the types of things that are going to be occurring in this May-June timeframe in a very big way. Okay, so now you have a very good foundational understanding of eclipses, how they work, what to expect, and, and all of that. Now we can talk about some more things specific for Leo. The first thing is I want to direct you to some resources that I've created to help expand your knowing about these eclipses and what to expect. If you search for Annie Botticelli, Eclipses in Sagittarius, or you just go to my YouTube homepage, I have an eclipse playlist, then that video will give you lots more details about the types of things you might see come up. Also look for my Eclipses in Gemini video. So Annie Botticelli, Eclipses in Gemini, or my homepage on YouTube. And this is because the eclipse in Gemini that is in June, you're going to start seeing that just like in April, some things might've started coming in from this May eclipse, some things from the Gemini June eclipse, you'll wanna get a heads up about that, okay? Then all of the Leo placements, it would be good for you to watch my Cancer, eclipses in Cancer video, okay? And I'll explain why in a moment. 
And then a certain division of you, which is basically the um, early degree placements, so June born, or not June born, sorry, July born um, Leos, or the first couple of days of August, you all will also want to watch my Eclipses in Leo in the fifth house video because only for you all in the early degrees or like zero to 11 degrees will you be experiencing this in the, in the fifth house of Leo, okay? So if you are a person who understands charts and you have the question, Annie, if Sagittarius rules the fifth house of Leo and the eclipse is in Sagittarius, why isn't it in the fifth house for everyone? If you're looking at whole house astrology, which is a different system than Placidus, which is what I use, and what many other astrologers use as well. If you're looking at a Placidus chart, it's not, it, it changes depending on your degree. So for every day into the sign or degree into the sign you are, it shifts the chart back. So basically clockwise um, on the chart and back. So that's going to pull the energy of the eclipse into the fourth house for most of you, and even those of you who are in the you know July born or first couple of days of August who are not having the um, eclipse officially in the fourth house as the others are, it's on the line because it's an early degree. So it's in the fifth house for you, which is the house of Leo, which is why you're watching the eclipses in Leo video, but it's close enough to that line. So if you just kind of imagine like you drop something in the water, it doesn't stay in a straight line, it waves out and then it sends ripples, that's besides the fact, but like it, it's a little bit in, or a lot, depending on what you drop, out in the direction of the initial fall. And that's how everything is in these charts. There isn't this line of delineation where everything is just right here. There are, there are orbs on either side that feed into the whole bigger picture, and so, so that's why. <laughs> okay, so now for the ones that will be most having the notable, and now all of you can and likely will have something notable coming from this. However, the closer to six degrees you are for any of your Leo placements, and you can do a free birth chart, run a free birth chart online, and then you can see if you have any other degrees. Like when I first saw my chart, I was very shocked to find that I have like eight-ish um, and then plus other through house placement placements in Sagittarius. So when anything goes on in fire energies, I have a wide array of degrees that connect into my personal placements. And you might have something like that as well, but you won't know if you don't run your birth chart. But if you have anything close to six degrees, you're going to be more significantly impacted. Now from the birthday perspective, that's going to be like July 28th, July 29th, July 27th, July 30th, like those grouping around there. But, so that's the first most intense positive tier. Then the second um, intense positive tier is all July born and early August. And then the third positive tier is all Leos because it's still happening at a nice angle for you all, regardless of if it's right on or not. So hopefully wonderful things will come from this. And do know, like we talked about before, that karma and dharma is involved here so the chance even if there are some challenges the chance to burn off negative karma is very strong and the chance to step into your highest expression is also very strong if you would like even more information on how you can maximize the starry possibilities click on the little arrow underneath the video that says more and that little arrow click will reveal all the notes below the video most of the time that i spend working is spent doing free offerings and you can see what all those are and get the links directly to them in the notes below the video First thing to do is go to AnnieHelpsYou.com, sign up for my free email newsletter. Not only will you get my happy scopes, a sneak peek into the highlights of all of the months of 2021, right now, you can see all of that immediately, uh, but you'll also get a more detailed uh, overview of each month, one month early, the sweet and salty dates of the aspects, what you can expect from them, and a general write-up of the month ahead delivered into your inbox one month early. You also get a free sign-on bonus called Shine, which is my virtual 28-day coaching program. And this is very, very, very detailed, and it can really help support you in your conscious evolution and breaking out of old patterns. So you get all of that when you sign up at AnnieHelpsYou.com. You'll see it right on the front page. It'll say, hi, friend, and then it'll have space for your name and email address.
The next thing to make sure to do is go to my school, loomlife.com, L-U-M-E life.com. It's Luminous Life Multiversity. And I've got free courses there, including one to help you ramp up your abundance called Unleash Your Money Magnet. You can also see my paid courses there, including my crazy comprehensive astrology program called Becoming a Professional Astrologer Mastery Course. If you'd like to do astrology, as part or all of your professional offering or just become adept enough for your own uh, process or to help other people. You will love, love, love this course, especially if you resonate with my work. And you can see that at loomlife.com and plus the other courses there. Also, to go to cozybysweetstarlight.com. That's my other beautiful website where I and a few amazing up and coming bloggers that I have selected to be part of this with me are giving you amazing offerings every month. And a lot of it is astrology kissed. So herbal teas are the signs and the sun's movement, hypnosis, healing frequencies for each sign. You'll love this site. It's called Cozy by sweetstarlight.com. Then also, don't forget about my books. I write books as well. I've got a book called Radical Prayer, Transform Your Life and the World in 28 Days. And this is a beautiful book of prayers and affirmations that you can use over a moon cycle or however you're drawn to use it. Then my very, very in-depth book called Planetology, How to Align with the Natural Rhythms of the Universe. And it does exactly that. So it's a very detailed, long, comprehensive book to help you align with the starry rhythms. And another very exciting thing that I want to share this month is it's the month of my boy, Seamus. We call him Seamus Blue Moon. It's his birthday in May. And he is having some offerings that are starting to come out. So you can see some work um, of his artwork in the link below. In the future, you will see him teaching courses at my school. He's working on a course now. So um, he's also a rune master, an amazing reader of runes. So you'll start to see more by him coming soon. And so this is his beautiful launch into the public. So you can check out some of his artwork in the link below in the more button. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.